Hey guys, and welcome back to the Mega Campaign with me, NG Paradox, where things are kind of becoming the War of the Empires. You know, with the Mongol Empire, we had the, the Sajic Empire, obviously it's now become kind of Yemen, I guess, is I guess what we could say it is. You've got the Deccan Empire, the Tibet Empire kind of revolts, the Byzantine Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, Hispania, Britannia. There's so many empires right now, and they're all fighting amongst each other and i've been talking a lot about you know what this could look like in eu4 and how i'm excited to see how this will look in that game but also i'm thinking about like you know victoria how is this going to look after in victoria and hearts of iron 4 you imagine if the holy roman empire survives that could be cool to see if it does and i said i don't know how it's going to be you know i i haven't played a conversion mod from eu4 to Vi victoria 2 in ages i did it like I think I played it myself like maybe three years ago, maybe two years ago. It was a long time ago. So I have no idea what it's even going to look like. Uh, if, if I, have to just, I have to wait and see. <laughs> I keep getting myself confused. Or I've never, I never played Victoria 2 to Hearts of Iron 4 either. So I'm excited to see what the modders and stuff have done. If they've added any uniqueness possibly. You never know. Maybe they haven't. Um, if it is just a simple conversion to it, still kind of fun. Um, we'll see how things roll. Hispania, though, your war. 31% in favor of the Kagan. The Mongols are coming. But he's got 22,000 men. He's got a good amount of men. He is the fat, though, you know? He, he is the fat. So he's a, he's a bit chubby. His father was assassinated at one point. His brother died attending to the chamber business. He was the king of Asturias. But no more. We'll take that off, then. Um, looking around... We got Bavaria. Oh, what is this? What is this Bavaria? Queen Emenegilda the Holy. So the Bolas. So the Bolas family obviously were the rulers of the Byzant Byzantine people. Sorry, people have been telling me it's the Byzantine Empire, not Byzantine. Sorry, Byzantine Empire. Um, and she is actually of their dynasty, but she's now a Germanic faith. How did this come about? Her father was Catholic. Her mother was Catholic. So what changed her? What in her life changed her? She's married, obviously, to the King of Aragon. So their kids will take over both of those. Aragon isn't really much anymore, to be <laughs> to be honest. Why is she Germanic, though? That is an, that's an odd thing to have. Still the Bolos in the Byzantine Empire. Going into E4, probably have a very strong Byzantine... I said Byzantine, didn't I? We're going to have a strong Byzantine Empire, actually, which is going to be kind of fun. See how that works out in the game, if it's very balanced or not. The L Lombard Holy War for Granada. The Duke of Lombard is trying to take her uh, that. But the, the Holy Roman Empire. I mean, look at that. I mean, if, if the Mongols do defeat Hispania, I want to see it just because I want to see what that's like because he'll be right next to the Holy Roman Empire. What will that, will that lead to clashes between them? It'd be kind of fun to see what would happen there. We've got rebellion in England. Uh, council powers. Child is the Lombard yet. Uh, Suomi is still alive. I like that. I want to see this survive. Keep surviving, Suomi. Keep the Sumanusco faith alive. German Finnish rivalry war. But he needs to he needs to get the religion reformed or just be pagan. If he doesn't get it reformed in EU4, I think it just becomes pagan religion. He needs to reform it like the Germanics. Oh, the Spaniards got down here as well, don't they? And here. Oh, golly. Ugh. What a mess. What a mess. The Middle East used to have such nice borders. And look at it now. It's just pieces everywhere. Oh, yep. The Western Protectorate still controls Deccan Empire, basically. They bent the knee. The cowards. The cowards. You cowards. You all bent the knee. The Arabian Empire, the Kaganate, Kingdom of Gujarat, Kingdom of Bengal. All the Indians bend the knee to the Mongol hordes. They can't help it. I mean, y you can see why, to be honest. You can see why. It it's kind of unfair to, you know, judge them. Two civil wars now. Oh, for Firfrith's claim. Who is Firfrith? I want to see the. I want to see the reason I keep checking England, uh, Britannia is. I want to see the Leedwaldens take back it. I want to see if they can actually take back it, and they are fighting for it. For Frith Leedwalden, 
He is fighting for his claim, but he is actually celibate. So if he were to die, the king of Saxony would inherit. Ooh, okay. The tormentor, though. He's not very well liked, probably, I wouldn't imagine. I think he is charitable, I guess. He likes to torture people, but he's also a kind and charitable and brave and just man. Huh. Maybe he doesn't deserve that name. What has he done? What has he done? Maybe it's just because he's ugly, yeah. Maybe because he's, like, disfigured and one-legged. People think he's, like, some sort of monster. But actually, he's a really nice man. And the Leodwaldins got back the Empire. Britannia has gone back to the rightful rulers of England. The Leodwaldin family. I'm happy to see them take it back. That makes me happy. Hispania, how's the war going? 88% in favor of the Kagan. He's still got 24,000 men, though. We'll suddenly just see it change the blue. Any moment now, won't we? Okay, Germany, Germany. Bavaria's got bits here and there. Yeah. Yeah. England, sneak up. I keep in saying Britannia. I apologize. It's Britannia. <gasps> And there we go, the Mongol Empire. So, it looks as though the Mongols decided to start west rather than east, really. <laughs> They're kind of taking up more over here. they got Mali. They've got Andalusia. Oh, what's this? Holy War for Khorasan. The Byzantine Empire is attacking the Mongols. And now the Lombards have to fight the Mongols for that Holy War. How many men do you have? 50,000 men. He actually might be able to hold them off. 46,000. Kagate the monster. He's actually... Maybe that cost him too many men. But there you go. That is... I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with this. Never... When I started this, I never expected this. Because this is just silly. <laughs> just because they had that one piece over here. They then decided to just invade Mali and Hispania. Very random. Very unexpected, but interesting. Oh, Britannia's now got this. What are you doing, Britannia? You're taking up here, taking here. You want to try and gain some control over northern Germany and Scandinavia? Is that what you want, Britannia? We didn't have any Vikings really attacking Britannia, did we, actually? In the end, you know, the Anglo-Saxons were able to bring it all together quite nicely. So it's not, it's not really like this is revenge against the Vikings, really, is it? How's the Emperor... Still Hessen, the Holy. Who's next? Hessen. Farold, his son. The Hessens are starting... His, his son's a Mongol? What? His son is a Mongol. Wait, so he married... <gasps> oh, the Holy Roman Emperor. He married a member of Genghis Khan's family, I guess, for protection. Yeah, maybe to make sure they wouldn't attack the Holy Roman Empire. And his son has been learning from them. And he feels culturally Mongolian. What a weird state of affairs that would be. I'm surprised people are voting for him, to be honest. He is Catholic. He looks terrible. He does you know, have the cat he does look Mongolian actually. He does have the Mongolian look in a way. I mean the Kagan is Catholic as well. So at least he's gonna turn Hispania Catholic. He could <laughs> he's gonna turn Hispania Catholic, I guess. Uh Mali's turning Catholic. Look at Catholic religion. I mean, if EU4 really sets that in, imagine when Protestantism happens. That is going to be hilarious. You could see, like, the Byzantine Empire go to that. Or Mali, possibly. That would be kind of fun. Okay, yeah. That's kind of the good thing about the Catholic religion, in a way, in the game. Like, even if they get really strong, it means, though, in EU4, they could always divide up after that. So that's still kind of fun. And obviously, there's personal unions and stuff. The Catholic religion, I think, in EU4 is actually the most fun and interesting because you have the split, and then, of course, you have the personal unions. Uh, Sunni and Shia don't really have that, sadly. And with Hispania defeated, that is the one Shia power. The, the, you know, they had that. The Shia had Iberia for hundreds of years. It was their main home, the one place they really had, and now it's been taken. What about the family, the Assed family? Are any of them still like kings? I don't think so. I think they got taken down quite a bit. How about a quick look at the family? Um, Look at the history. Oh, no, not history for this. The clan. 
Kagane of Hispania. Is he gavel kind? Agnatic Nomad Succession. Huh, interesting. But yes, oh, he's already died, actually. D died in suspicious circumstances. Um, but this guy had it. He's now dead. What about the kids? He actually had a kingdom, but he lost it. Okay. Just trying to see if anyone, like, had a kingdom title still so they could try and retake it all, but... Doesn't like it's going to work out. The Byzantine Empire, I think they defeated the Mongols, possibly. 20,000 men right now. They've lost a lot of men. What about the Mongols? The Mongols now basically control Siberia. They've got the lands over here as well. 38,000 men. Butter, bubble, stop it. Stop fighting. You're like a damn Mongol right now. Come up. Sorry, the dogs are, uh, the dogs keep fighting. So I have to just give them some attention. They want attention right now. Stupid puppies. But yes. Overall, yeah. Things are looking a bit more peaceful now. You've got the Holy Roman Empire. You know, they've got a lot of land these days. They're married to the Mongol hordes. The Mongol hordes have Iberia. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Andalusian Kamani vassalization war. Yemen looks pretty good. Obviously, this is the Sajerks. Oh, do they still have it? Let's have a quick look. Who's the leader right now? Nope, they lost it. Sultan Mirza the Conqueror. So, Mirzid looks like he invaded Egypt and took it... Well, Yemen, I guess, sorry. Look at all these titles. He took it away from the Sajerks. They're going to be upset. Yep. Look what happened. They lost it all. How could you... Say jokes, you, you rose so high, you caused so much problems in the Middle East, and we may never see you again. There's a possibility, obviously, but we may never see them again. They had it all, they caused chaos. We'll remember them, they did cause a lot of chaos. Uh, Tibet actually seems, do they, no, it's Kingdom of Delhi. They don't actually control it, it's just a tributary. Uh, Yutsang has kind of taken over, Guj is not doing well. They've lost most of their land to Yutsang. Gondwana. Huh. Oh. Holy Roman Empire's making their borders much nicer. Look at this. They've eaten up a lot of the smaller lords. Mongol Empire does have a piece of land in Aquitaine. Faith's host claim on Hispania. So someone's come here with a... Faith Faf Abbasid. What? You're not an Abbasid. Who is this? He is the grandson of the Caliph Asaid. He wasn't the last one, was he? Was he the last caliph? I don't think so. Uh, 127, yeah, he wasn't the last one. But he's the grandson of a former caliph of Hispania. And he wants to take it back. But why? Why is he got a different name? Where did he get the name Abbasid? His father was called Abbasid. His, oh, I guess through the, okay, for one of the women line, he has come from... Um, them. Okay. Uh, Ekfrif the Cruel is now in charge. His father died a natural death. He's married to a Von Brabant. What do you have in your hold? Guardian. Not much else, really. Germany does the same. Got the King of Saxony. The Oh, Queen of Saxony, sorry. Her father died in the dungeons of the Emperor. So it looks like his father... No, his father didn't. No, the torment. They're both tormentors. That's the one we knew. His father got back Britannia. Then he lost it, I think. Nope, this guy got it. Then he died. I guess it went to him, actually, instead. Okay, so that's how it went. Very Scandinavian look. She was also married to King of France. Okay. Actually, the King of France doesn't exist anymore. There is no King of France, it looks like. Let's have a quick look. Um, let's click on this and do de jure. France. There is... The Hearst family is still the kings. They're just in the back. <laughs> They're just here. The King of France is still here. He has no vassals. He's basically just a man, a mayor, or something who owns Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam, and he's like, I'm the king of France. And he goes, yes, of course you are. Yes, of course you are. Yeah, we heard it. You say it every day. 
But really, there's no Kingdom of France at all. Um, not even underneath the Holy Roman Empire. Who are your vassals? You've got the King of Brittany and the King of Perish... Perish... Peramish... Peramish... Peramish. We'll call it that. Um, so he's got two kings underneath him, but not that many kings, actually. And Britannia just has the King of Saxony. And, oh, the King of France is actually a vassal to Britannia. I didn't even realize that. That's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, uh, the French won't be happy about that, but Britannia will be very happy about that. No wars in the Mongol Empire? What's going on? What are the Byzantines doing? Holy War for Kiva. Been quite pe it looks quite peaceful right about now. Not that many moors. A prepared invasion of Suomi. And they're actually fighting... Holy Roman Papal du jour war over Rome. The Holy Roman Empire is attacking the papacy. Oh, we can see he'd lost land. So the Holy Roman Empire said, I don't need you, Pope. The Hessian family are too strong. We no longer need the Pope. I have the Mongol Empire. Are you actually allies? They're not. Okay. <laughs> if he's allies of the Mongol Empire, that'd be insane. But poor Pope. He's actually got friends, though. People are helping him. You know, the Knights of Calatrava, Rus, Hospitalia, Teutonic Order. All the orders are like, what are you doing, Holy Roman Emperor? This is too much. You can't attack the Pope for no reason. But here we are. And Rome will fall. The Holy Roman Empire wants all of Italy. He wants it all. I like that he's making nice borders. Look, he just needs this and I'll be very happy. Then we just need Germany to finish off Bavaria. I'll actually, you know, we have like, it means we have like the Holy Roman Empire, Britannia, and Germany is the only real places in Europe. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of want something to fall apart, actually. That'd be even better. I would like before EU4 begins for maybe one or two places just to fall apart. That'd be kind of fun to see. How the Mongols, 40,000 men, uh, Kori Latai, the destroyer of the Mongol Empire. That's a, a big name to live up to. Well, you're in hiding. Idrisid of a day lamb. So the Mongols are taking over land up here mostly. Um, Norway seems to split up a bit. But it's still the Skuldung family, which we always love to see. One of my favorite fa fam uh, families to see right now. Britannia eating up more land. Denmark, poor... Poor Af Munso family. Of course, we've got Iceland. Um, the Duke of Island. Basically sounds like Iceland, doesn't it? Yeah, actually, it seems to be quite peaceful. I don't know why. I don't see many movements when it comes to territory right now. It seems that most of it, apart from obviously the papacy, um, who has finished. Did they win? They lose... Nope, they still got Rome. But he lost his eyes. So the Pope... Nope, this is a different one. Oh, it's a new Pope and he's blind. No wonder people like him. Ruby Scepter. A G. Some interesting stuff there for the Pope. But he's only got three places... He used to have all this up here at least. And like here... I know he at least had that stuff. So it's kind of weird to see him lose so much. Oh, new Emperor... Emperor Hughes, maybe, oh, maybe he died. Ah, oh, so before he could take Rome, he died, I think. Yeah. That does make sense, because there's no peace here. So I think the Emperor, before he could, the Hessian family died. And because of his war against the Pope, it made his family unpopular. So his son did not actually win the election. And it went to the Rick Frieden family, who are actually French descent right now. Uh, celibate, not going to have any kids, though. What's your dynasty's history? Uh, the Dukes of Orleans. Duke of uh, Hugh the Lion. They've been Dukes for quite a while, it looks like. Then your father had nothing. Oh, they were married to the Nubelingen family. But his father had nothing. No. Rick Frieden. Used to be the Duchy of Gascoigne. Oh, so they used to be the Duchess of Gascoigne. Then they married to the Nubling family and got Orleans. Okay. And they used to just have our magnac. 
We're French still all the way back then. 1000 AD. Let's go back a bit more then. Oh, Saxons. So they originally maybe were Saxons. Nine. Oh, wait. Why is this picture different? Huh. Okay. His son was the conqueror. He took over Perig. Okay, so I think they came from Saxon lands. His son, though, decided to go be an adventurer and he took over lands uh, like Perigord down here. That's a pretty cool history then. So they came all the way from like up here. They invaded some lands down here and they kind of became the lords down there. And they took, you know, Gascoigne and they married into a different family, got Orleans. It's kind of a... Oh, I've gone some wrong somewhere. And you can't go back. Where did I go wrong? Oh no, I'm lost. Um, okay, well, we, we kind of got the idea, I guess. I think that was probably it. The Holy Roman... What? Britannia? Did you bend the knee? They did. He's a tributary state of the Holy Roman Empire. What? Laid walled in the family. What have you done? I guess maybe he doesn't even have an alliance with them. No, nope. I thought maybe it was an alliance with the uh, Mongols, maybe. That's, that wasn't him, yeah. It was the other, it was the previous emperor who had that. Huh. Okay, so the Byzantine Empire is actually expanding. They're using the chaos of the Mongol Empire, really, to expand their power. So the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire could be coming in for clashes. Two Roman states. Holy Roman Empire, they say they're the true successors to Rome. But the Byzantine says, no, we've been here for ages. We've been, we were still here when the Roman Empire collapsed. We are the true successors to the Roman Empire. Could come to blows, maybe. The two Catholic states. Norwegian revolt. Mongols. Catholic crusade for Andalusia. So the Pope has had enough of the Mongol Empire. He says, okay, they, they, took, they took Iberia. It's now our chance to take it back. That way we can get the Catholics back. We'll do a reconquesta of Iberia. This could be the real reconquest of Iberia, actually. Uh, Jerusalem is still controlled by them. Actually, the Holy Roman Empire has that. Western Protectorate still protects India right now. Yeah. We're coming into the, the 1300s now. Uh, Suomi does not look good now. What is going on here? War against the tyranny. No! Sua, oh, he's a Catholic. Oh, no, that that's fine. Defeat him, kill him. War against, war against his Catholic tyranny. I, I understand now. I completely understand. <laughs> and he's fat, apparently. Too much. But his son is obviously the leader of the cult, uh, the uh, sort of Satan religion of Sumanusco, whichever it is. He's possessed. He's brawny. 30 martial. He should inherit. Um, she, though, is actually in the rebellion. Actually, he would get it if they win, so it would be kind of cool to see him get it. But yeah, a lot of... Yeah. Not many one province places left, really, is there? Like Russ, you know, here. Uh, there's a very tiny nation here. The Grand Prince of Volnia. Very tiny right now. There's not really much he has. Sweden has come back. Is that Novgorod? Novgorod? Why did Novgorod come back? Okay, he's Russian. But Germanic faith, kind of cool. Uh, Sweden, Af Arland. Oh no! What is the? Okay, who did this? Okay, so it looks as though the crusade was a success. They took it back from the uh, Mongols. Byzantine holy war for Khorasan again. Uh, liberation of Shuwu. Um, it's only this part left, and so the emperor, I guess, could build a second. Empire title. Yeah, he got the Kingdom of Andalusia. And he decided to make Frankie because he feels French. So he wanted the French Empire. He decided to make it that instead. Agnatic elective. Oh, dear. He says, nope. We are not a Holy Roman Empire. We are a Frank... Wait, are they different electives? Wait, wait. Okay, Van Breda is on for that. Oh! <gasps> 
Oh my. Wait, wait, wait. What does Frank here actually count for? I've n when he dies, I don't know. Is it they're gonna break between them? If they're both elective, is it gonna like split up? Are we gonna have two different Empire tier titles? I have no idea. Uh, Austria Asia over here, same woman. She lost. Does she have uh, no? She lost Bavaria, but she still has the other titles. Bavaria's gone to this guy. Uh, Traversky, the usurper, he's an idiot. Uh, maybe his wife was in charge. She's insane, though. What? It's, uh, I thought it was starting to look a bit nice, and now it's going crazy again. The Mongols have been pushed back quite a bit. Now they're being attacked, obviously, by the Byzantine Empire again. They're taking over all this from the Mongols, yeah. The Mongols kind of came in, smashed stuff, especially, you know, the Cedric Empire and uh, the Middle East. But since then... It's kind of gone downhill. Only 30,000 men left these days. It's not really gone to plan, has it? Uh, Kingdom of Denmark still exists. <laughs> uh, Frankia controls, uh, you know, Britannia. He's bent the knee, of course. Queen's claim on Skorosh. I'm not sure if I like this. I I'm going to see what happens when he dies. We'll have to wait and see what happens when he dies. He's 39 years old. He's wounded, stressed as gout. He could die at any moment now. Rick Frieden is elective. Still a, oh, same person though, is it? It is. His son though is the favourite to win both, so it could keep it together. They can keep that together before EU4. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Uh, Mongol Revolt, what is this, Independence? Yep, Independence League. Mali, Cisse has seen his opportunity. They're trying to get for independence. They're led by uh, Kilabid Tao. He's a Han. He's a Buddhist. He's leading this revolt. A lot of places over here in Iberia. Okay, Middle East as well as part of this. And a lot of the Mongols land them. up. Could this be the end for the Mongols? Only 19, 20,000 men. The revolt is currently winning right now. Damn, could it already be the end of the Mongols? Could this be the end of their story? I mean, they came in with a bang. We can give them that. But will this already be the end? And will that lower the success of the uh, of China, the Yuan Empire? Or will they continue to succeed? I mean, it's still a golden age for them. Still a golden age, it seems. They now turn back to Egypt. No, long, no longer Yemen. Quick and attractive. Oh, it's a <gasps> Shia. Okay, so the Shia have taken over in Egypt. They maybe have lost uh, Iberia. But, oh yeah, Yemen still exists. Yep, the Merzid family. It was actually him, the conqueror, the man who conquered Yemen. He then lost it to the Shia dynasty. But Egypt controls that, that, and this. Yemen has this, and this. That's it. Oh, and this and this. Okay. Kind of a mess. And uh, down here, actually, as well. Mongols still control land over here. This is what happens with your feudal succession. You know, this is what happens. Um, but cool to see the Shias rise up again. Get their own home once again. You know, they, they needed something. Foot of a famous holy man. Okay. Religion. So Shia will start the spread over here. Um, Catholic faith. Taking over Iberia very quickly. Very quickly indeed. Buddhists all the way up here. Germanic. Ah, oh, it's so it's so sad to see that like Norway is the last vestige of the Germanic faith, basically. And it would be the Skuldung family, the ones who actually first set it up. I mean It's a shame, but there you go. Going back through all the kings. The kings of the forefathers. Heising the terrible. Ah, was that the first one? 1029. His grandfather, Jarl. Ah, okay. Let's go back. Uh, Suomi's Germany has hmm, not taken Bavaria. 
Um, Austria, Asia, I think they've taken some of it. There's a Duchy of Luxembourg right here. Led by the Nubelinging. They always get everywhere, this family. They get everywhere. I want to see the Independence Revolt win. 60% in favour of the Rebellion. Looking forward to that. Mali will be back. I want that to happen. I want Mali to come back with a vengeance. Take over the world. <laughs> Um, the Deccan Empire is now free. They're no longer bent the knee to the Chinese, the Emperor of China. No longer bending the knee. And they've gained land, actually. They definitely look slightly bigger, and they're over here. Arabian Empire is still here, but that's... Yeah, they're kind of just over here. No, the Deccan Empire. This is just... This is the Arabian Empire, I think, isn't it? Yeah. That's all that um, they got a bit down here as well, but mostly the Arabian Empire is gone. Poor Arabian Empire. Norway now controls this, huh? Trying to take over lands, new places, I guess. What's Francia doing? Castilian du Jour War with Valencia. Claim on that. Okay, they're attacking the Caliph. Duke William's claim on Al Jazir. I think that's how it's pronounced. Lombard invasion of Jerusalem, and what is... Britannia just took over Germany. Did you make them bend the knee? What just happened? You just took over Germany. How did that happen? There's no German king, and he just took over, like, all the lands up here, because he got Germany. So Britannia just took Germany, so now they own basically the whole of Germany, and... A lot of Scandinavia, and then some. It's going to be Britannia versus Francia, but obviously they bent the knees of tributary state to Francia. In the year 1306, Francia has become a massive world power. Look at this empire. I mean, obviously, Britannia is a tributary, but still, that is impressive. It reached the height of its power during the years of Rick Frieden, after the invasion of the Mongols, which turned the whole world out of balance and completely destabilized Hispania. It allowed Francia to kind of take control of the situation and force the British, the Anglo-Saxons, to bend the knee. And look at that. That is... Oh, did they lose? They did. Mongol Catholic revolt, though. The revolt lost. Oh, that's a shame. I wanted to see them take over. Take back their lands. Ah, uh, that is crazy. I did not think we'd see an AI, like, do like this. They've done very well. I mean, obviously it took them a long time. It's now, you know, been 500 years. <laughs> but still, you got to give it to the AI here. This has been impressive. That's a, that's a good nation. But we'll see what happens when he dies, because we're still not completely sure about the inheritance. Guy Litellia. And same for the Holy Roman Empire. It's both elective. No more Rick Friedens, apparently. For now. We will see. Byzantine Empire? What are you doing? Revolts there, peasant revolt, peasant revolts. All for the Empress to fight. She's married to one of her own family. They keep marrying their own family. What's with these people? Died attend to the bedchamber. Comatose in bed. She's grown up now. The Bolas family. Primogeniture for the late Waldens. So his daughter, who's married to a Baghid Khazar. The Khazars are going to take over Europe again, but this time through marriage rather than conquests. <laughs> Apparently, she's, oh, she's from the Varavid family. Are you joking? Wait. How do we get to that? There we go, yeah. It was his son. Uh, Bagar Bagid. Um, he's actually a bastard, so that's not really his dynasty name. But the son is a Bagid. He's Germanic faith as well. What is this? What is this? Are they going to take over... Brit is Germanic faith going to take over Britannia? And will that revive the Germanic faith? Is that, what, is that what's going to be reviving this? Revive the Germanic faith? Tibet. Look at Tibet. I mean, they're obviously tributaries as well, but still. Still impressive. 
Well, I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pull this right here. We've had a lot to kind of process right now. And yeah. What a situation we have here. This is crazy. Um religion wise, Catholics everywhere. Um culture wise. Germans can go all this, you know, Ang Anglo Saxons come back to <laughs> come back to Germany, apparently. Um Andalusian is still over there. Huh. Mongols. What's that? Greek over here. Mandy. Yeah, nothing really too crazy that I can notice. The Italians have got most of their land back. Uh, well, not back. They've appeared in most of the land. Uh, Lombards still exist over here, though, which is kind of nice to see. Anglos almost got the whole of Scotland. No more Scottish. There's no more Welsh. No more Welsh people and almost no more Irish people over here. It's a sad day. A sad day. Estonian doing well, though. There you go. Nice little Estonian piece of land. But there we go. Uh, government types. The nomadic. Yeah, it's mostly the Mongols. Nomadics are not many left, really. Um, nomadic lifestyle is mostly being destroyed. Apart from where the Mongols are. Um, the rest is feudal. Look at this. All of Scandinavia. It's developed quite nicely, actually, hasn't it? It feels very realistic, the way that kind of it's become feudal. Economy-wise... This is the economy. Looking pretty good. And uh, I guess we'll get Dynasty. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay then. Yeah, the Pearl Girl. That's a good one for them because all these lands are actually their family, aren't they? So it's kind of good to see it from that point of view. But yeah, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.